Hi, I'm Mitch and this is a FreeCAD tutorial on using expressions in the Sketcher or Part Design workbenches and using either the F of X icon which you'll find in some of the constraints dialogs or just by hitting the equals button. And the reason that I am calling this expressions as opposed to equations or formulas is because if you search the word expressions in the FreeCAD documentation that will bring up this web page where it explains how to do all of this. Searching for the word formula or searching for the word equations won't bring you to this uh, page in the FreeCAD documentation. You have to search the term expressions. And everything I'm going to show you comes pr primarily from this page. I'm working in uh, FreeCAD version 0.19. I'll be using a design of a flange based loosely on class 150 flanges. So I looked up a table of class 150 flange dimensions and then I simplified the design a little bit down to these five dimensions. The outside diameter, the hole diameter, the inside diameter, the thickness, and the bolt circle diameter. And I determined that approximately each of these other four dimensions could be written as a an equation written as a formula of the outside diameter. So the thickness is about 0.07 times the outside diameter. The inner diameter is about 0.8 times the outside di diameter plus some offset and these are all in inches. Same with the bolt circle diameter. It's just an MX plus B kind of equation. Uh, the whole diameter is I would call a conditional equation because the whole diameters stay constant for a few OD sizes and then once you go up to the next set of outside diameters uh, the whole diameter takes a step jump so it's like three quarters of an inch three quarters of an inch three quarters of an inch and then one inch one inch one inch and then about 1.25 1.25 1.25 so it takes step changes so I call that a conditional dependency on the outside diameter and then the number of holes also depend on that. So I'm going to design a flange uh, with these five dimensions and every single one of them is going to be dependent on the outside diameter. So the motivation for this video was that I've had the experience several times of designing a relatively complex part and then about halfway through the part I realized that one of my dimensions needs to change. But several other dimensions depend on that one and I had not started my design with the forethought of linking them mathematically in the sketch. And so if I change this one dimension, that means I'm going to have to change a whole bunch of other dimensions manually. And you can see that uh, is what I've done with this version of that flange. So if I go to sketch here and I come on down to the sketch constraints, this constraint right here is the outside diameter. It's 10 inches which is 254 millimeters. And so if I go and I realize maybe I need to put this on a little bit smaller vessel and I need an 8 inch diameter and I uh, enter that in. Now I realize I have to go back into every one of my sketches and change all of these dimensions that are driven uh, by that manually. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna redesign this flange so that this doesn't happen. So let's go on up uh, into create a new empty document and then we'll come down to the part design workbench start in that. From within the part design workbench I'll choose the sketcher and I can either hover over the XZ plane to choose it or I can choose it here in the taskbar so I'll choose it here and hit OK. It snaps to the XZ plane. I'm going to start with a concentric circle that is coincident to the origin and I'm going to constrain the diameter of that and you can see that all my constraints are in millimeters because I do prefer millimeters but all of the class 150 dimensions are in inches I could go up to preferences and change that but I think since I only have a few dimensions to enter in I'm just gonna type in all of my dimensions and specify inches so I want to flange with a 10 inch outside diameter we're going to say OK. I'll zoom out here and there it is. I right click to get out of that dimensioning and you can see that it's changed it to 254 millimeters but it's 10 inches. Um, those are equivalent. So now I'm going to uh, 
also specify my inside diameter in this sketch coincident with the origin choose the diameter dimension and now I could type in I could calculate what my ID should be and manually type it in but here is that f of x uh, icon so we can either hit equals or click on this for this time I'll just click on the f of x icon there's a whole bunch of expressions that you can use in this equation bar so I would suggest you go back to that free cat expressions uh, documentation and look through for your expressions here I'm just multiplying some constants by uh, the original constraint that I want which is this constraint to the outside diameter so the way that I can do that from within the same sketch is just type in the index of that constraint so I start I it's case sensitive so it's a capital C constraint and you can see constraints is up so it's saying let's reference the constraints index and you would think that the index of constraint 2 would be 2 and this is kind of something that irritates me uh, it turns out that the indexing for your constraints starts at 0 so in other words constraint 1 is constraints index 0 constraint 2 is constraints index 1 so you just have to subtract 1 from it so I want to use constraint 2 so it would be constraints index 1 and I can tell I got it right because you can see this result up here the formula editor gear gives me my result and I'm saying that this is equal to my constraints index 1 and then um, I want my ID to be uh, if you remember this is the outside diameter constraints index 1 is our uh, term for the outside diameter times 0 0.8183 minus 2.0 oopsie 2.042 and then I have to say inches so you can see before I typed in the units on that 2.042 um, it got angry and it told me that this isn't gonna work out uh, notice that I don't need the units for this because constraints index 1 already has units so I'm taking something with units and multiplying it by a constant that makes perfect sense but when I add or what sorry when I subtract this 2.402 that part doesn't have units until I give it units so um, a couple things one uh, this index is always one less than what it's called over here this constraints is uh, case sensitive you do need to specify units but if you're multiplying by something that already has units then there's no problem and you can always check your result up here we'll hit OK we'll hit OK I've got a fully constrained sketch now and so I am going to close that sketch and then I'm going to pad the sketch and now we're gonna take this one step further I can you can see that I can type in a function for my pad length and so that would be my flange thickness instead of hitting the f of x button I'm gonna just hit equals which I prefer brings up my formula editor and I told you that that is equal to constraints one which was our OD times 0 0.0649 so the OD times 0 0.0649 but now our formula bar is telling me that we've got an error it's not found here in constraints and that's because I'm not within my sketch anymore so if I want to um, refer to something in a sketch first I have to refer to the name of that sketch and so that's going to be sketch sketch dot constraints one and I and that gives me a result of uh, 16.04 millimeters that sounds about right so we'll hit OK OK and we'll come back to model and so that was that's that's my sketch and I'm actually gonna ch check something in real time I would prefer my sketch to be renamed flange base and now let's just check my pad uh, function and it changed it for me so I renamed my sketch it came back and it automatically updated uh, the sketch name to flange base so now from now on I'm going to refer to the sketch as flange base 
and we hit OK, OK, and now I need to do a bolt hole circle, uh, and I'm going to design that on this face. So I'll select the face, and I'll go to Sketcher, and it snaps to that face. I will change to Construction Geometry, and I'll make a concentric circle, sorry, excuse me, a circle that is uh, coincident to the origin. Type that in, and I have, uh, let's right click on it, let's see. Constrain the diameter. I'm going to just hit equals, and this was. Now we're in a different sketch, so of course I've got to say flange base. And it, and if I, I if I typed down and uh, enter, and it gave me flange base, and note that it has that dot. Don't forget the flange base dot. Constraints, you bet and then constraints 1 in flange base times and for our bolt hole circle diameter it was 0 0.9495 minus 0 0.9934 and then we have to give it units again inches and you can see that that gives us something between 145 and 254 millimeters so it should end up right around where the blue circle is let's uh, hit OK and OK and there it is. Good. So now let's draw one bolt hole. Let's uh, change this back to normal geometry. And we'll make one bolt hole on that is constrained to this outside diameter. Right click. And this is also a function of uh, the ID, of the OD, excuse me. Ah, yes. So this was a fun one. I was just looking at my spreadsheet and I realized this is not just a this is not a um, direct function of the uh, of the outside diameter. It changes in increments, if you remember. So that means that we will have what's called a conditional a conditional constraint and I'm actually going to show that here in uh, what the conditional constraints uh, dialog looks like here in the expression. So if we come down to conditional expressions, they want it in this syntax, the condition the condition that you're trying to meet, question mark, and the result if true, at colon, and the, the result if false. So that's what we're going to do for both the bolt hole diameter and the number of bolt holes. Okay, so what I would like to know is, is flange base dot constraints expression, constraints index 1 less than 10 inches? Question mark. If it is, then I would like my uh, bolt hole diameter to be 0 0.88 inches. If it's not, if it's 10 or larger, then I would like my bolt hole diameter to be 1 inch. Okay? And so in this in this case it is um, greater than 10, so it's 25.4 millimeters equals 1 inch. So that worked and we'll say okay. Okay. And we'll just fast forward through some of my diddling here. And so now this uh, is fully constrained. We can close. And I would like to turn that into a hole. We'll just make it a through hole. Okay. And now I'll take my pocket and I'll go up here to create a polar pattern feature. Click on that. And it starts with two occurrences. And I would like the number of occurrences, like I said, to be a function of my outside diameter. So again, we're going to go, we're going to call my outside diameter. And it's, again, conditional on whether it is larger or smaller than 10 inches. And if it's smaller than 10 inches, I think I'd like 8 holes. But if it's larger than 10 inches, I think I'd like 12 holes. OK. And it's 10 inches or larger, so we got 12 holes. Cool, so it worked. OK. And there's my flange. 
So now let's see if all of this dimension linking worked. Let's come back to flange base. Our only constraint with a number on it is once again our outside diameter. And let's say I want to make this 8 inches. I expect everything to get smaller and my number of holes to drop from 12 to 8. Hot dog. Now let's say I want a bigger flange. Let's say I want a 12 inch flange. Nice. Everything gets bigger and uh, we've got 12 holes again. So I hope this helped very much. I hope it was as satisfying for you to see that last uh, change in size as it was for me. Um, please leave your comments.